for joining us for another episode of Living Single While Parenting. My name is Jillian. We have our usual suspects, Danita and Keegan. And joining us tonight, we have Venusia. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. And you're more than welcome. Tonight's topic is the role that parents play in an education. And I, I see it in two ways because I'm a teacher by trade and I'm a parent even though my son is young and he's not in school yet. And a lot of times we talk about our student success or the lack thereof in the educational system. And there's a lot of finger pointing. And personally, I, I tend to think that it's up to the parents, that the parents should take control of the situation and make sure that their student, their child is getting the best out of their education. Well, I absolutely agree with that. I think that we as parents should take over where the teacher leaves off and then add a little bit and then send them back to school with a little bit more knowledge. What do you think, Kate? Okay. Oh, absolutely, I agree with that 100%. I mean, the learning starts in the home when the child is starting to learn about their body parts. You can't just send them to school with no basic knowledge of who they are as, you know, this is my nose, this is my eye. They learn that at home. They don't learn that from school. Right. And I mean, you have to build upon that as they get older, period. You teach them their ABCs. You teach them their colors. And then you send them to school and you reinforce what the teacher is teaching your child. You don't just depend on them to give your child everything that they need to know. So what did you ladies, Anisha, do you agree with that? I definitely agree. I think that every child has an origin, and the origin is the parent. Mm -hmm. So the child needs to be taught at home how to be in the classroom and how to work in the classroom, how to be respectful. If, like you said, they learn the ABCs, they want to three at the house, so the mm -hmm. teacher is just supposed to reinforce those activities that were done in the house. So what do you ladies think is the disconnect? Why are our children coming to school so unprepared by the parents to actually learn? I, I think it is the parents. I mean, so everybody has a curriculum. And let's say so at preschool or kindergarten, there's the expectation of what the students are going to learn. I think there's also the expectation when you're at home. It's like Keegan just said, the parent is supposed to mold and teach their child up until the time that they enter into school. So they should learn the ABCs, the colors, the body parts, etc. And I think a problem is a lot of the children are going into school and they don't have this basic knowledge. Mm -hmm. And so they already start behind and absolutely never catch up. I mean, it's surprising how many kids go to school and don't even know their mother's name. Absolutely. So they say, well, what's your mom's name? Mommy? Really? Right. You're six. But what about the ones that come to school completely unprepared? I mean, Joe's a teacher, and how many stories have you told me about they don't come to school with pencils and paper? Well, now, that has to come from home. That right. could be something where the parents can't afford certain things. So, I mean, that, that's kind of... <laughs> the, child should, the child should always be a priority. Yeah. But in the parent's life, that child, in a sense, that child mind needs to be protected and needs to be fed at all times. Right. And that is one of the most frustrating arguments for me, listening about the economic status of this child is there with Jordans. Do they still wear Jordans? Whatever the Air Force ones, whatever shoes are oh, popular. Yeah. They have the shoes. Absolutely. They're wearing true religion jeans, which are about $200 oh. a pair. The girls yeah. have the micro braids. These are lots. These aren't braids. But the girls have the micro, they're about $200, and their name brand purses, you can go to Target oh, yeah. and buy a pack of pencils. Absolutely. Right. I agree yeah. with that. Absolutely. And, and, and that's what just frustrates me so much. They keep making it seem like it's an economic thing, but, I mean, it's a whole different segment. Uh, you know, poverty in America isn't even what it is in the rest of the world. They can afford the things that they need. And in that case, it's just a, a case of bad priority. Right. Bad priority. Bad parenting. Yeah, bad parenting. Absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. But what about places like um, my third grader did not know how to use a dictionary where when I was in third grade I was quite proficient at it mm -hmm. because my mother made me but I don't know me sure. not making her? oh no 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 <laughs> and very much so making her but it she asked me how to spell something and I said I'll look it up and she'll know me I don't know how to use that that's a sign of the times nowadays they're getting more into the technology with the spell, spell, check, spell check and dictionary.com google mm -hmm. anything you can look it up did you mean xyz So there's a crisis. I mean, we're the CPS system. 
in Chicago public schools, and there's constant talk about the schools failing the students, the students are performing at level, and then everybody wants to point a finger. And I think the politicians, are, you know, oftentimes they blame the teachers and, and the schools and what we're not doing for them. But if you ask me, myself as a parent, mm -hmm. my son is going to go to the right school. And he is going to go to a school that nurtures him and educates him. Mm -hmm. And if they're incapable of providing him with those services, I'm going to take him out. Right. You know, well, now what I do have to say is what I know from experience is some parents don't know that they have the option of shopping for school. I do not know that because I have a coworker that didn't know. She's like, "How do you know? How did you get your daughter into such and such school?" I said, "Well, because I applied." She goes, "Well, they don't have to go to school by their house." But she knew how to shop for the proper price on that coach purse, though, didn't she? <laughs> and she knew how to do what she did. It's common sense. I mean, it's not necessarily. It's not necessarily. A, I don't think. I thought with that notion, I don't agree. I don't think that knowing that that there are so many options for schools is common sense. Because common sense isn't really common anymore. That's true. So if you come from a neighborhood and you go to the same school and your mom went to that school and your kids go to that school, mm -hmm. you kind of don't know that you can send them off to Skinner or where, where, the, where the rest of those schools Do they not know that their child is not prepared to go to those schools because those are select enrollment schools. So you have to pass an achievement test to even be eligible to go to those schools. So is it that the parent just didn't do what they were supposed to do at home, and therefore their child is not eligible for that school, and in their lack of caring, they just let their child go to the neighborhood It's no, it's the parent's fault. Or it always goes back to the parents, because as sure. the parents, you want your child to be in a school where it's performing well, so your child can perform well. You don't I want to send your child to well, a school I'm that's performing bad. bad. So I'm I'm bad. 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 A parent using their no. resources to make sure the child is in a safe environment, exactly. a healthy environment. Right. I don't think you all understand what I'm saying. I'm on the fence with it. I'm sorry. I mean, no, no, go ahead. But I'm on the fence with it because my kids are enrolled in CPS. CPS, right? Yes, yes. Anyway, but um, when in Madison, the way it's set up is you go to the school that is assigned to your area. Have to? You have to. If you choose to have your child enrolled somewhere else, you are responsible for transportation of that child. Many people do not have the options for transportation because of the way the medicine is set up. It's okay. set up very, I guess, expensive. Is the word I mean. Okay. And um, they not have vehicles. Transportation. Um, there is public transportation that runs every half hour, but it may not be accessible for someone who has to be at work at 7:30 in the morning. Right. So you really don't have many options. There are good schools in Madison. Mm -hmm. now, I mean, their school system is actually pretty great, but. I believe it's the, the way that the teachers relate to the students that is part of the problem. What do you mean by that? As far as cultural relations. There's a cultural disconnect that goes on where I live. That's not necessarily present here in Chicago. Can you expand on that? Without being racist. You <laughs> <laughs> insensitive? Not really. Um, there's, a, there's, there's a lot more Caucasian teachers. Okay. And there's a lot more African American students, and when these when these teachers teach our children, um, they don't quite understand the dynamics that go on in an African American household versus their own household. Uh, are you saying there's special dynamics that go on in a black household that a teacher needs to be sensitive to <coughs> in order to teach them that two plus two is four? No, I'm not. However, when a child is coming up and African American household, and they learn in a specific way. Their parents are teaching them in a specific way. And are you saying there's a black way of learning? There could be. What like what? Because because that, that frustrates me. Everything sounds like an excuse to me. Right. And, and it's not calling you out way. per se. Mm -hmm. but what is this? There's already uh, okay. Better. There's already a stigma put on black students when they are being taught by white teachers. They already assume that these children are dumb. Maybe they're not dumb. Maybe they just have a different way of learning. Maybe they're dyslexic. You don't ah, know. Ah, so the race of us are maybe dyslexic? This is, but it's the parents' thing. responsibility to debunk that. The negative thing that they may be trying to be able to really ruin that child with the teacher has that stigma already. That's because do you, did you hide your kids? Hide your kids? Do you see that stuff on TV? Hide your kids. Hide your. What's that? Retarded. Oh, that's ignorance. We're not talking about that. And became in this shade. Right. That's what I'm saying. Do you take that and just 
is automatically assumed. That's the problem. Actually, they <laughs> see that and they automatically assume that this is how this child is. So we show them differently. Right, exactly. Me in the classroom, I'm a lifelong learner. And when I'm in the classroom, they do tend to, especially rocking the naps, they come at me with this expectation. As soon as I open my mouth and start talking, it's over for them. And they have to see clearly that I am not the stereotypical, what you finna do, who that is. They see that very clearly. And then, so I command and I demand that you treat me in a different and better way. Oh, I, I, I absolutely agree. And this is the thing. When I go to the school and I speak with the teachers, they see, oh, well, she's not the stereotypical mother who sits at home watching TV all day. Right. And, you know, batting her, her butt while she's watching <laughs> whatever. You know, they understand, okay, she's college educated. Mm -hmm. She has children. She actually comes up to the school and attends these parent-teacher conferences or attends whatever little performances they're having. Right. Whatever. They see this and they're saying, okay, well, she's not like them. Right. And that's also a problem. You know, why, why, why is there a separation? You yes. know what I mean? It should not be a stigma attached to being African American in a predominantly white school system. But here's the thing, Kim. When you have, like at my children's school, I mean, they know I work because I go up there quite often in my uniform. So they know if I need to come, I will be there. Right. I am also the email parent. You know, I may not, I mean, I, I am very much the email parent. I may not be able to get there. But you send me a note, I will respond, and the behavior will change. You know, but at the same token, when you have children that ain't finna, ain't gonna, and then their mothers come, right. and you ain't finna gonna teach my child, right. and then that adds to the stigma, right. and it makes the child, it, it makes the teacher not want to deal with the child, because I don't want to deal with your ignorant mom. That's true. So That's it kind of puts the children in a box, That's and those true. children, like, like our children, they may well be treated differently. Okay, well, her mother cares, and her mother speaks well, and her mother is going to curb the behavior when I bring it, when I bring the behavior to her to her attention. We, you know, our children get put in one box, and the ones that are unteachable get put into another box, right. and that's where that's where it leads off to. Because they're they're unteachable, though, right? You, you don't don't no, I don't believe they're unteachable. Oh, no. I believe ignorance begets ignorance. Yes. If you're ignorant, then your child is ignorant, exactly. and they may very well be very intelligent, but they just can't. They may be very intelligent. They, they may be very Exactly. They may, they may very well not know. And they may be a bit, a bit behind. And see, that's the problem. That's what I'm talking about. The problem comes in where these teachers see the children and they automatically assume that your child is like, or your, yeah. this parent yeah. is like this ignorant parent over here. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem. That's the part that needs to be eliminated. Well, that's why I make a routine of going to the school and right. they go, oh, you very good. <laughs> I like you. <laughs> but I mean, I hear, I hear what you're saying. And it's not fair to apply those stereotypes to our children, you know, as a teacher. Right. I mean, we're human, and we do tend to draw certain conclusions, mm -hmm. but how will that affect how I teach your child? If I am that Caucasian teacher, and I but see you your child come in, if exactly. I'm just trying to paint a scenario, and your child comes in with the sagging pants, talking about who that did, even if I perceive him in a kind of a way, how does that affect my level of instruction? Like, from you as a parent, what do you think I'm going to do that's a disservice to him? You're automatically stigmatizing him and assuming, well, he's not here to learn. He's here to socialize. So I'm not going to try as hard with him as I may with this child who is sitting here listening to me, not doing anything disruptive in the classroom. But every child is teachable. Every the teacher has to know that. Mm -hmm. they, like I said, they have different styles. They come from different households, different right. situations. But that child still needs to be treated with respect from the exactly. teacher. Exactly. You know, you know, Jill, with you, you're a math teacher. Math is one of those subjects that is, if you got it, there's no room for interpretation. Yeah. Right. It's black and white. Yeah. It was very black and white. How are you saying that? Like, from how people learn? No, from, from, the the learn. Learn. From, your, no, no, from your perspective. Because you're, you're, I don't think you're understanding how can I not teach a child math whether or not they're black or white. Math is a very it's quantitative. It is what it is. Right. Okay. Reading, on the other hand, is something completely different. It's something that you can fully learn. It's open for your interpretation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, while you call it a cupboard, I may call it a cabinet or whatever else. And when you, you tell me, 
and, and if you read to your child, Old Mother Hubbard, then you would also know that it could be called a cover. Exactly, but but how many of our young people? I mean, and we we talked about that earlier. They're not reading to their children, mm -hmm. so, so then it comes back to the parent, right? The parent isn't is reading to their child. The parent isn't making themselves visible in the school. I.e., the teacher feels that it's okay to treat the child a certain way. The parent mm -hmm. is a parent in their child while the pants are sag and they're looking hood and okay. perpetuating that myth and end up being treated in a certain kind of way. She doesn't know what her son's pants do in school. He leaves the house with them up around his waist. This is where people's teacher-parent communication comes in. in the mm -hmm. child showing up with saggy pants and he didn't hear she did not leave home like that. Then the teacher needs to, you know, have a talk with the parent. It's all about, it's all about communication, but it's also about grooming, and it comes back to the parents. You know, I don't think it's a matter of priority because it always astounds me when I right. when I talk to Jillian and she says mm -hmm. like she tried to call a parent and call a parent and call a parent, and she, the parent would never answer. That parent would never come. Oh, the number is disconnected. Mm -hmm. Hold on, but when you yeah, have, when you that. take the iPod, the parent shows up the very next morning. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's the yes. Yes. The parent doesn't pay for the school fees, replace the book, but when it's time for prom, they have the fanciest car and most expensive mm -hmm. dress. Then the parent has all the money. In. Point of fact, what I we're doing at our school is we're saying that you can't buy a prom ticket if you don't pay the student fees. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it. You have to pay it. But you know, just to kind of close us out a little, and I know it's brief and it's, it's such a topic that we want to expand on. I know. If there's one message I want to impart to the people listening, is when we start talking about who is at fault for the state of black America, our children's education, I have one person to point the finger at, and it's the parents. It's you. I agree. It's your fault. You fix it, and you handle your business. I agree. I agree. As well, parents. parents. Oh, As parents. parents. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. All right, so thank you for joining us. Thank you for listening, and please go to our Facebook